So let's set the stage for, for today's scripture verses that we're going to cover with a quick review. Philippi, remember, is where Paul baptized Lydia. She was our first uh, known European convert. And it's in northern Greece. And it is a metropolitan, metropolitan city. It is, it's a happening place in the first century. And keep in mind, there is an incredible sense of national pride and identity rooted in their Roman citizenship. Now, it might sound strange that here we are in northern Greece talking about Roman citizenship, but remember that as the Romans are taking over, they're having massive wars, not just in Italy, but they're having civil wars in Greece and in parts of Turkey and in other places in the Mediterranean region as well, northern Africa. And what happens is, is when those wars end, they leave behind all of these soldiers and these, these captains and generals and these powerful people, and they don't want them rising up in rebellion, so they give citizenship and set them up with power to be under control of Rome, but give them just enough power to say, okay, you, you've got your, your own domain here. And they're very loyal to the office of Caesar. Now, Caesar is the name of the man, Augustus, who transitions the Roman Empire from a republic, what we might call a democracy, into uh, essentially a dictatorship, although they would never use a word like that. They wanted to convince themselves that they still had some sense of, uh, of liberty. And so these people in Philippi, particularly the people in power, were deeply aligned and loyal to the king or Caesar. Now, again, they never used the word king. That was like the bad word, but the person who was in power essentially acted like the king. So, so I'm trying, I'm not a great artist, but I'm trying very hard to draw a, a very simple throne to symbolize this, this power that, that emanates out from Rome throughout that, that Mediterranean region. Now, this is, this is hard for us to wrap our head around sometimes because we don't experience this level of uh, adoration towards an, an office or an individual, usually in our world today, like they did back then. But keep in mind, they see Caesar as a god, son of a god, and this, this powerful being, and that means that you're giving your focus to him, you're serving him, you're giving your loyalty to him and to the, to the throne, so to speak. Your identity is rooted in your citizenship and the privileges and the rights and the powers that he's bequeathing to you, giving to you. You, you will sacrifice literally and figuratively for, for he who sits on that throne. Um, you'll notice Caesar's image is everywhere back in the first century. He's on your coins. So you're carrying him in your pocket. Every time you make a, a purchase or a, an exchange of anything, he's right there. He's, he's part of that. He's, he's centered in it. He's always looking over your shoulder and he's always behind you because there are idols of him everywhere and there are images of him everywhere. Are you noticing this, this struggle? That it's not just Caesar. It's also the pantheon of gods and goddesses that symbolically are enthroned and you have their idols and their altars and you do sacrifice and obeisance to them. Now, let's make this, let's make this a little, uh, hopefully a little clearer, why Paul is saying some of the things he's saying in these epistles to the Philippians and Colossians and others, quite frankly. But this is, the, this is a, a good set of, of uh, books 
to discuss this because here's what's happening. In the first century, in that Greco-Roman environment, your local city has a patron god or goddess. For the Ephesians, it was Diana. And she would, they, they believed she was protecting their city, overlooking them. They build a temple to her. It becomes one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. They buy statues of all sizes and varieties to, to give obeisance to her, give loyalty to, to serve, to focus on, to sacrifice for. Their identity is rooted in that goddess in that particular instance. In, in fact, there was a riot that breaks out. Paul's preaching and the people that who are creating these statues dedicated to Diana feel like their, their status, their employment, their access to money is going to be diminished. And they basically cause a riot in the theater. And it's over like, we want to keep serving these gods. And Paul is saying, actually, there's a God who has focused on you and served you and been loyal to you and sacrificed for you. And he's going to give you a new identity and people just didn't want it. Yeah. See, now now keep in mind, it is much more than hitting these people like Demetrius' story that you're just sharing there from Acts. It's more than hitting them with the pocketbook. This is, this is their cultural identity. This is in the very fabric of their, of, of the way they live is that if something goes wrong in our society or in our city, if there's a famine, if there's a drought, if there's a flood, an earthquake, a volcano, a, a pestilence, a disease, a plague, if there's something bad that goes on in our city, their mindset is 100% wired to say, oh, we didn't we didn't make enough sacrifice or we didn't please our God or our goddess or our group of, of deities enough and they're angry at us. So they're punishing us because we didn't, we didn't keep the feast or the festival the right way or we didn't perform enough sacrifice. Now watch this scenario. You've got that mindset, that cultural identity is in the fabric of their, of their DNA as a people. And now Paul and company show up in these groups of people and say, actually, that's ridiculous. As, as Taylor's saying, that these gods and goddesses and this Caesar, no, there's only one God and you've got to worship him. Stop going to those festivals. Stop performing those rites and those ordinances associated with that idol worship. Stop uh, making sacrifices at their altars and start worshiping the living God. Well, people, people are going to take notice. Well, hey, we're having the festival for our, for our patron God or our goddess, and where are the Joneses and where are the Smiths? Hmm, they're not here. Then if something goes wrong in the next little while, guess who's gonna get blamed? Guess who's going to get the ire of all of the people, the townsfolk saying, it's you. You're the reason the god or goddess is mad at us. And you can see for two to three hundred years, this is going to happen to Christians all the time. They become the, the scapegoat. If something goes wrong, Rome burns. Who does Nero blame? Even though he did it, he blames the Christians for the disaster. If there's a loss of a battle or a war, uh, we get up in arms and throw the Christians to the lions. That is that is their solution, is they're at fault, we're going to punish them. And so you get this intense persecution of Christians because of their strict belief in one God and not worshiping Caesar, not worshiping, not, not giving in to the idols of the, of the culture and the society. And that's not going to change uh, in any major way until the fourth century when you get Emperor Constantine coming in. What's really sad is that human nature hasn't been upgraded that much over the centuries, that we still sometimes as societies like to choose certain groups of people who aren't like us and blame them if things are going bad. It doesn't take a lot of effort for any one of us to go online today and see who are the groups that we're blaming for problems that we are experiencing? And furthermore, 
people still seem to want to be pulled into the worshiping of individuals who have power. And let's just make a brief example. If you remember, the, the Germans used to have, uh, the ruler was called the Kaiser. That word is a variation from the Latin word Caesar. So the Germans were basically saying, we have a super powerful single individual who's gonna sit on the throne, we'll call him the Kaiser. And even the Russians, they had their one powerful ruler called the Tsar. And it's actually a variant from the word Caesar. So we all have in our fallen nature this propensity to want to worship a single human or a set of humans and give them all of our love and loyalty and to then exclude others who are children of God should be our neighbors and to blame them when things don't work. And so among the things we might ask ourselves is, are we willing to listen to Paul and focus on who the real king is, who has done all these things for us, he's sacrificed for us, he's been loyal to us, or are we going to stay in our fallen nature and mistreat people because something didn't go well in our lives or in society, or they weren't part of my tribe worshiping this human that seemed to have a lot of power. So this is, I think, a cautionary opportunity for all of us to reconsider our own, our own perspectives. So now, as we get ready to jump into the epistle to the Philippians, it, it's fascinating to watch how true love can be given to the true king, the, the God of heaven and earth, as opposed to our uh, history's attempt at giving love and loyalty and sacrifice and service to the pantheon of false gods that are that that can't give anything in return because they don't have that power they don't have that love to return and as we get ready to dive in just ponder for a moment have things really shifted that much in two thousand years we don't have Caesar all around us in our physical and visible world today. But we, we have other potential idols and false gods and false prophets that we do carry in our pockets if we want to access them that way. And they are looking over our shoulder and they are persecuting and mocking when you don't worship at their altar, when you don't do things their way. And there's a variety of those that exist in our world today. So hopefully with that foundation as we jump into Philippians, we'll be able to keep our focus fixed and locked on the true throne of God and He who is worthy of our sacrifice, our focus, our service, our loyalty, our love, and rooting our identity in Him. That's, that is the message of Paul the Apostle to these Philippian saints. 